You're gonna be just fine. I just talk. You know, I just talk. Listen to them. Children of the night. Sick transit, Gloria. Thrill me. Hello everyone and welcome to Kill the Cast. My name is Jerry and joining me as always is the ever quotable Jay. I fixed my microphone. He did. And also joining us is the Silent Hill biker himself, Kenneth. Woohoo! You know, Kenneth, I was uh, I was over at my buddy Jimmy's house this Friday and we were talking and you know what he said about you? <laughs> awesome. He said he could listen to you talk forever. Really? Yeah, he, he, he was like, I fucking love his voice. I could sit there and listen to him talk forever. Because he was telling me he listened to the Frozen episode. And he was oh, like, yeah, he was like, a lot. he was like, that motherfucker taught me more about wolves than fucking Nat Geo. <laughs> nice. So, well, yeah. Because Friday. With Jimmy? Yeah, his name's Jimmy. Um, hopefully at some point him and I are going to be doing a podcast covering like, uh, Lower grade horror movies that would not show up on Kill the Cast, more whoa, like whoa, whoa, Brides whoa, whoa, whoa. of Blood You're Island. Not above lowbrow. Yeah, it's a little too lowbrow for y'all. We're talking Brides of Blood Island, Philippine exploitation, fucking shit like that. Well, Jimmy, I appreciate the compliment out there, man, and uh, you know I'm glad that you enjoy listening to my voice. Yeah, but we were over there Friday night. Grilling, drinking, uh, watching Frank and Hooker on a projector. Had a bonfire going. It was shooting guns. Shooting guns. It was a good time. I made fun of uh, our buddy Dave, who's the one that uh, Jay and I interviewed in the Jason outfit. Uh, oh, nice. I made fun of him the entire time for his love of Night of the Comet. So that was Ugh. really good. Why? That movie's so good. No, it's, no, it's not. not. It's not good. I told him. I was one of the worst movies I've ever seen. He challenged me and he was like, you can't tell me why that movie's good. I'm like, I haven't seen it in like three years. But, and I started listening off stuff and Jimmy was like, just don't Dave. You don't, you're not going to win against Jerry. And I was like, I'll rewatch the motherfucker. I'll cover it on the podcast and explain why this movie sucks. I think maybe we should. Maybe we should. Maybe we need to have this conversation. Um, so yeah, that's that. I, so I've been doing. I, I did that, and I'm also, uh, you know, finalizing all the prep for the podcast under the stairs summer series, uh, which should start recording uh, next month, which has been dope. Uh, Jay, what have you been up to? Uh, mostly work. Uh, the last two days specifically have been ridiculous. We had uh, 22 different drop offs on Friday. Um, that's compared to like the seven to 10 that we normally get. So it was a ridiculous day. Then Saturday we played catch up while we were understaffed. And so I've just had some shitty days with like no lunches. Uh, today I went into work so we could build computers. Uh, so I've been doing a lot of work, uh, recreation wise. I've been playing bloodstained on the switch, uh, to get my little Castlevania fix in. Um, why would you play it on the switch though? That's like the worst the port. system I have it for. You should have got it for PS4. I wanted, I, I wanted it portable um, because Metroidvanias like to just do like randomly, and so I wanted to be able to play it portable. That's fair. Um, I'll give you that. I would pick so, it up. If I find it for 15 20 bucks. I'd buy it. So that's, yeah, I picked it. Well, when it first came out, I picked it up. I played some, then I put it away like I do with everything. And uh, But recently I've been going through my backlog Oh, so I was like, so now, now we're back on Bloodstained. And, okay. uh, That's fair. <laughs> actually, I actually, I beat the boss last night and then it was like, Hey, you didn't beat everything. Game over. I was like, Oh, <laughs> Oh yeah. Yeah. I did that same shit. <laughs> I, yeah. That fucked me up. Too. I was so surprised. I was like, Oh, it's the last boss. All right. I guess I'm done with the game. No. <laughs> no um, well, now I'm, uh, opening the, uh, the map up and exploring. Yep. I've beaten the game. Um, I do want to go back to it cause now I've got, uh, the bonus stuff that I can do from them dropping the DLC because I get it oh, nice. free from the Kickstarter because I did the Kickstarter. Right. So I need to go back and do that, but I haven't done it. Yeah, so that's been fun. And then Animal Crossing, uh, and that's uh, that's pretty much been my life. Nice. Uh, what about you, Kenneth? What have you been up to? Uh, not a whole lot. Um, this past week, I've had a severe bout with IBS, so I really haven't accomplished much this past week. Um, I watched this movie that I saw advertised on Instagram called After She Wakes, which, you know, there was some things that, you know, kind of put me off a little bit, but otherwise it really wasn't a great movie. So 
I mean, you can anybody out there listening, you can take it for whatever you want. I mean, if you want to check it out, check it out. I mean, it's it's on Prime. Um, but uh, other than that, not really nothing. I spent most of the week either in pain or sleeping, and then going to work. <laughs> that sucks. Yeah, it does. But you know, I'm pretty sure that at some point in time, both of y'all can feel me on that, especially Jerry. Oh yeah, I'm about that IB life y'all don't even know what oh, i've know. been going through uh whole life dealt with that shit but uh it'll be all yeah, right bad th- yeah the bad thing about it is is i'm like you know i've been my ibs started up last year so mm. jerry's had a lot more time to get used to it than i have that's true i know a lot of the secrets and tips oh i also want to give a shout out to uh my boy mr venom who i do underwater kaiju with he sent me a record of sweet murder on blu-ray and I was so fucking excited for that. Um, I mentioned this movie in our Best of the 2010s episode. So I, I got that in. I'm really excited to revisit that in stunning HD Blu-ray. Great Japanese found footage movie. So, I, got, I got a question for y'all speaking yes, of ma'am. found footage. Uh, this is for both of y'all. Is the Poughkeepsie tapes worth watching? Yes. Yes. Yeah, I haven't watched it yet. I was watching I I heard Jerry talk about it before, but I hadn't watched it yet. And then I was, you know, I got a thing about watching Looper videos on fucking YouTube. And uh, at least I think it was Looper. It may have been the other one. Um, but uh, I came across this thing and they were talking about found footage. And the Poughkeepsie tape was one of them. And it actually looked really fucking interesting. So I was thinking about checking I, it out. I, I was really blown away by it. I didn't expect to like it as much as I did. It's uh, it's it's really uh, low budget and gritty, and that just adds to the uh, the realism they were kind of going with or trying to go for. And yeah, it's definitely worth watching. For fucking sure. Um, okay, so I think that's enough of that. We need to get into it because, guys, it has been a long time. But we are doing a horror coliseum, our first horror coliseum of 2020. We put up Woo-hoo. a poll with a bunch of suggestions. And y'all voted on Orca versus Alligator, which was my choice. So, hell yeah, my people out there. And at first, I was kind of like, will two creature features work? Will two eco-horror films work in a horror coliseum? Well, we picked the perfect two ones for that because this is beautiful so first off we have orca from 1977 a hunter squares off against a killer whale seeking vengeance for the death of its mate uh starring richard harris as captain nolan and uh, kenneth can tell you where y'all all know him from he was the first dumbledore in harry potter in the first oh. two harry potter movies <laughs> wow Yep. If I'm not mistaken, he was also in 310 to Yuma? The uh, remake of 310 to Yuma? I'm not sure. But we also have Charlotte Rampling as Rachel Bedford. We got Will Sampson as Jacob Ulamak. He is one of the greatest Native American actors ever. We also have yeah. the uh, first film debut of Bo Derek, even though uh, she technically filmed a movie before this, but that movie didn't come out till like 87 for some reason. So, Bo Derek, a sex symbol of the 80s. This is her first time. Nice. I knew I recognized that chick. Is she the uh, lecturer? The no, no. Expert? No, Bo oh. Derek's the, the girlfriend of the um, shipmate. She the one who got her leg ripped off. Yeah. Oh, okay. I was going to say the blonde, yeah, the blonde with the broken leg. Okay. Yep. Okay. So, we are going to get into this. As you know, for horror costumes, we have 15 categories that we have scored one through ten, we add all those up at the end to see uh, which movie won. We are going to start with Alligator, and then after that we will be getting into... No, we're starting with Orca. Then after that we will get into Alligator because Orca came out first. So, with that being said, uh, does anyone want to volunteer to go first? I'll go first because okay. I probably have the least to say. So, everyone can build off of what I said instead of me trying to follow like your guys' deep, in-depth observations of this movie (laughs) deal okay then we are starting with number one story slash script take it away jay all right i gave it an eight um i love the premise of this movie um it basically takes the the animal and turns them into almost a slasher um it's like a revenge 
and the fact that one of the characters is an actual animal with a motive as opposed to something like Jaws where it's just kind of like a shark doing what sharks do. Um, I just I was blown away when I read the description when you said this is the movie we're doing because I'd never seen it before. And I was so happy with the end result. Uh, I, I enjoy the plot, uh, the plot to this. Dope. Uh, so it was your first time watch, huh? Yep. For both movies, actually. Really? See, oh man, one night I got to go, I took my brother to Full Moon Cineplex and they were doing a double feature at the theater there for Orca and Alligator. So we got well, to I watch both in theaters. I don't have a Full Moon Cineplex. Well, I know because it's a, a independent place that's just here. Yeah, I don't even have anything <laughs> relatively close to a Full Moon Cineplex. Well, you know, move to Nashville. Maybe. Uh, move to Nashville just for that. <clears throat> yeah, okay. Right? Uh, Kenneth, story, script. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, I'm coming in with an eight. Um, I thought it was, I thought it was actually uh, a really good story. I'm kind of, I'm going to kind of piggyback on Jay a little bit. Um, the idea of giving the animal a full on fucking backstory of why it's doing what it's doing. I thought it was fucking awesome. You know, I really like that because, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, the, my thought process for it was exactly the same thing where you're, you know, you take Jaws for instance, where, you know, you get a little bit of why Jaws is doing what he's done, but it's only really based on just the nature of, you know, what the shark does. But in this, you've got a full on fucking thing, almost like the whale is a human. And so, you know, looking at it from that perspective and then all the lore and everything that goes in with it, like the native, type thing with the killer with the uh with the killer whales and all the rest of that i think everything put together was great i thought it was a fantastic idea for for a story to go to a movie and and have a good reason why this animal's doing what the hell it's doing for so, sure i gave it an eight um i'm coming in with a nine uh to me this is one of the best stories ever in uh the subgenre of uh eco horror creature feature not only is it man versus beast, but it's a revenge flick that has us rooting for the Ultra while also having us sympathize with Nolan. Uh, it's a creature feature version of Death Wish and takes way more from, from the Death Wish revenge style film than it does from something like Jaws. Uh, this is definitely like a Death Wish version of Moby Dick, basically. And yeah. there, there's not many films that you can think of, even in the subgenre of creature feature, that really tackle the subject matter this way. Kenneth is right. Like when he's in Jaws, it's just, oh, well, I believe in theory of territoriality. But here it's like, no, whales are known to be personable, communicate, take revenge, mate for life. They give you every fucking reason. They also give you, like, everything with Nolan, telling you his backstory, telling you about how he lost his pregnant wife in a drunk driving accident. You know, they, they do such a good job with world building here that it's just absolutely fantastic. And that's why I have to give it a nine. Yeah, I mean, and, and the cool thing about it is, is like, like you said, I mean, it's almost like that, like that whole scene where you see uh nolan and and why he feels bad you know because it's not just it's not just that thing where 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 the uh he feels bad because you know he hurt this animal when he wasn't trying to hurt the animal when he was capturing you know the 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 female killer whale you know but he also had a kinship with it because he lost you know his 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 wife and child, and so now I mean it, it it almost hits home to him. So there's like a there's like a dynamic between the two of them to where they're not only are they joined because of how bad this whale wants to fuck him up, but they're also joined in the emotion as well. Yeah, and it, so it's actually a lot. It's actually a really really deep story. Yeah, I can't think of many. I I really can't think of another creature feature. That has this deep of a story, especially in the eco horror genre, right? So, so it's pretty good. I probably if I if I'd actually really like spent more time thinking about it and 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 trying to go over this conversation in our head, 
You know what I'm saying? I probably would have scored it just a little bit higher because it, it, it's a damn good story for a creature feature. Oh, for sure. So, okay, let's move on to cinematography, technical aspects. Jay? Uh, I gave it an 8. Uh, everything was, was really good. Uh, I like the intercut footage of actual whales with uh, the the parts that were uh, obviously models or dummies or whatever they, they want to call them. Um, but I think it, if we're coming out in 77, I think it looked fantastic. Um, everything was real. I just don't have any complaints. Cool. Uh, Kenneth, cinematography, technical aspects. Uh, same thing. I gave it an eight. I mean, you know, the the shots were done really well. The underwater shots were done pretty good. Um, there were some scenes where you could tell that it was done with a killer whale in a tank. You know what I'm saying? It almost looks like it was being shot in a tank at SeaWorld. But that's even because those, it I, was. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Even those looked pretty. So, um, you know, it, I, I, I give it an eight. It was pretty good. You know what I'm saying? There wasn't any where there wasn't any spots where I thought that. I was just like, oh, my God, man. I mean, how do you fuck that up? I don't think there was any places like that in, yeah. in, in the whole thing. So I give the cinematography an eight. It was pretty good. Kenneth, was, is this a first-time watch for you? For Orca? Yes. Okay. I was just checking. Okay. So I also give it an eight, but I actually do have complaints, but I think it's because I've seen it so many times that at this point I can spot a lot of, like, stuff. Um so the mixing of the live action footage sometimes really is a problem for me because it's clearly using night for day or the water's too clear or the lighting is just really off, um, things like that. There's shots where they're using a female orca after the female orca's dead that they should be using the male orca. Um, that like If you're looking at the fin, you can also tell that the live orca doesn't have the, you know, missing piece in its fin. Um, So just after watching it so much, I've caught all of that. But I still don't hold it that much against it. So I really do give it an 8 because the cinematography is so great. There's so many just absolutely beautiful fucking shots. Um, So I'm with you. 8's all around. We move on to... Character development, Jay. Uh, I gave it a seven. I felt uh, that the captain uh, had had little development, and that's kind of hit the score for me. And maybe what you guys say will change my mind, as often happens when we talk about these technical aspects in depth. Um, but I felt he was uh, pretty much um, pretty much the same throughout. Um, his motives changed through the movie, but his attitude didn't really. Like, he just finally realized at one point that he needs to leave because people are dying because of him, but he didn't... uh, He was still all about killing that whale. Uh, So, yeah, that's... uh, That kind of took a hit for me. I just didn't... uh, I didn't feel like there was a lot with with the main characters. Interesting. Kenneth? I gave it a nine. I thought the character development was great. Um, when it really comes down to it, I mean, I hate to do it, man, but I completely disagree. No, um, that's fine. I like hearing at the, the difference. At the beginning, I mean, you can see Nolan at the beginning of the movie. He's he's extremely cocky. You know what I'm saying? He's He, he does what he does, um, you know, especially when he's out there trying to get the shark. So, you know, he, you see what he's doing. And, and then as the movie progresses, you, you can see to where he is growing into – the anxiety that's looming over him about what is happening to the town and what is happening with this. And the fact that, I mean, the, the, the disbelief that he had and then having to believe that this animal has, has, has done what it's done, you know, to where it's basically, you know, uh, attached itself to him based on, you know, uh, a revenge emotion. And so seeing Nolan battle with that and seeing how, it's going back and forth on what he's going to do with his crew, what he's going to do about his boat, you know, all the rest of these things. And then on top of that, you know, I don't personally think that it was just about killing the whale, you know, because like at the beginning of it, he didn't want to kill the whale. He just wanted to capture it and sell it. And then he fucked up and he realized that he fucked up and he still didn't want to kill the whale. You know, he, he, he just kind of wanted it to go on and be done and, and, and kind of try to forget about it. But then he couldn't because, you know, the whale is still sticking around doing what it's doing and, and goddamn fucking up the town. So That's a it, fair perspective. 
Yeah, I feel like I feel like throughout the whole movie, you were. It's almost like watching Nolan go into a descent of clarifying madness. If that makes sense. That does. That is a fucking perfect way yep. to put it. You're right. See, and now I would change my score. So you right. win. I mean. So, I mean, like I said, I mean, you know, towards the end of the movie, I mean, he's fucking going insane, but he's getting it. You know what I'm saying? He understands why, it, which is odd to me, you know, it, 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 the whole thing. And so that right there. And then you got the development of like you take the native guy who's got all the all the lore and everything, you know, his, his old stories from his ancestors and things like that. And then him basically going out with all that to help this guy accomplish what he's trying to accomplish by going out and battling with this whale. So you got that dynamic and then you, you can, you can watch the progression of the scientist lady, whatever her name was. You can even watch her progression where she goes from being this, this, this lady that's all for don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it towards the end where she's basically cheering Nolan on to fuck this whale up, you know? So you, there is a lot a lot of changes in this movie with the character. <laughs> so I am I am steadily on a solid nine. And I honestly think that, again, if I were to dive into it even further, I'd probably almost be willing to give it a ten. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much with Kenneth there. I am also at a nine. The journey of Nolan and how we come to see him by the end of the movie makes us feel like we are actually a character in the movie. It's almost as if we share the same eyes as Rachel, the scientist, who narrates the movie. Um, while it lacks development for some of the side characters, it really doesn't need it, because the development really comes from Nolan and Rachel, and how they go up and down throughout the whole movie learning and experiencing and how that changes their outlook. Um, and I really don't need to go more into it because Kenneth really fucking hit the, hit the head of the nail on the hammer with the thing thing and said things and it was perfect. <laughs> um, so yeah, nine also we go back to Jay with pacing slash editing. Pacing slash editing. Uh, I gave it a seven. I, uh, it's, it's fantastic. Um, the last half hour feels just, just the littlest of dragged out to me. Um, while they're, they're going, while they're going North, um, just a little bit. Uh, I probably should have scored it higher to be honest with you, but, um, other than that, it was, it was fine. It starts off, uh, with some great introductions to the characters and what they do and their motives, and then kind of just like right off the jump um, gets into it. But just just that the little bit right after they leave the dock, just it feels like a little bit of a drag to me. But otherwise, it was it was good. Gotcha. Kenneth, pacing editing. I gave it a seven also. I mean, there was, just, there was some spots where I felt like it just drug a little too much. I mean, I know that, you know, coming off the back of the characters and development that they were trying to accent what was going on with Nolan and stuff like that. But they were still kind of, there were still like spots, like especially towards the end of it, like where they're going through the ice and shit, where I feel like that it kind of drug on a little too long. Um, but other than that, I mean, that was pretty good. And then... There was a couple of other spots where there were things that were that I feel like too much time was spent on. Like I know that uh, it, you know it was supposed to be a big spot where the whale caused the explosion and shit like that, but at the same time I felt like that whole sequence kind of went on a little bit longer than it needed to to be as impactful as it should have been. Um, but other than that, I mean, you know, it was still pretty. It still moved along pretty well. So I, I'm going to stay at my you know my hand job. It was pretty. It was decent, but it, I'm going to keep it at a seven. All right, I'm actually a little bit lower than y'all. I'm at a six, uh, but it's mostly for the editing. There are a lot of shots where they could have tried to hide the real whale better in the scene. Like him attacking at night, but being seen in clear, bright water, or them using red on him to reflect the fire instead of a orange or yellow. Um, just in general, the editing of scenes involving the real whale do not always come off right. Um, you probably don't notice it when you first watch it as much or it doesn't affect you, but after multiple watches, I've, I, it, it becomes very apparent. Um, as for pacing, uh, the movie is always going forward, 
But it does take a lot of time for character stuff that does make the film feel like a two-hour movie instead of an hour and a half. Not necessarily oh, a bad thing, then, but uh, yeah, that that drag is there. Mark. Uh, you know, funny story, actually. So I, uh, I originally downloaded it, and the audio cuts off in that last half hour. And so I stopped and then paid for it legit through Amazon because it was the only other copy I could find before recording today. Uh, and... I was surprised to find out that I'd only been watching it for about an hour. I was like, God, I feel like <laughs> I thought this was a two hour movie. <laughs> yeah. Also, next time, just ask me. I, I had it digitally. Yeah, well, whatever. You know, the movie deserves some money. I, I agree with I that. Paid to, I paid to rent it, too. Oh, well, good. I, I watched my Blu-ray. So. Well, I don't have a Blu-ray. Yeah, that umbrella Blu-ray. Um, okay, we move on to Atmosphere, Jay. Oh, yeah, I keep forgetting that I'm first. Uh, atmosphere, eight. I felt the atmosphere was actually done really well. Um, you feel, uh, you can feel the the emotion from the whales, even though they're, they're you know, either an inanimate object or stock footage or however they filmed them. Um, the sound effects that they used and stuff really made it so you could feel what they were going through. Um, and then just the, the, the small fishing town, like everything just felt as it should basically. Uh, even the, the claustrophobia towards the end when they're, you know, all alone in icy waters waiting for this, uh, this revenge animal to come and get them. I thought they did a really good job setting up the atmosphere of the movie. All right. Kenneth atmosphere. I'll give it a six. I really didn't like I, I mean, it was one of those things where I didn't think, I personally didn't think that they did anything really to add an, uh, I guess, ominous, I may be using the wrong term, but just something like that overall feel of it. I mean, you know, um, it was just basically, you know, for me, it was just night and day, you know what I'm saying? There really wasn't anything to kind of, in my personal opinion, to give it an overall, you know, uh I'm trying to think of the best word that I'm looking for here. Um, but overall, it just didn't, you know what I'm saying? There's a, uh, you'll see the difference between this category and the next category for me when it comes to this particular thing, you know? Um, but I just don't feel like that it didn't give me that, that the atmosphere itself did not give me that feeling of unease or, or, or uh, uncomfort. Or something oh, like that. See, it that, did for me, especially at the beginning. Comes. Yeah, it just didn't give me that. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's a difference between like you know utilizing, in my opinion, utilizing sound to elicit a certain response versus the overall look and feel and and the emotion that that your surroundings are 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 giving you. So like in the atmosphere, I look at it for okay, what are the surroundings like? Which is like the difference between this and alligator. In alligator there was a lot of darkness. There was a lot of small space because of the darkness. Versus this where it's just like I said, I mean it's like a it, it, to me it was like a person just had a camera for night and day. You know, so the atmosphere itself in my opinion was not that i mean it was just there because of the time that the that each shot was taking place so does that make sense yeah i get it i get what you're saying but i disagree okay i mean um, i just want to make sure that what i'm saying is coming across to where it's understandable yeah um so for me i'm with jay i give the atmosphere an eight uh the beginning of the movie does a, such a good job at giving a very depressing mood and once we get into the film, it changes from that depressing mood to I always feel like I'm with Nolan and I'm battling this adventure that seems to be being thrust upon him. I don't want to do it just like he doesn't want to do it until it's absolutely necessary. It's always looming over us between the the depressing music the the gray tones of the town how the town people act about him where they're like kind of saying you know you need to go do this you need to go do this and he's like well i'm not gonna fucking do it i really thought like that was a piece of the atmosphere that i normally don't get in a movie where the town it's the look of the town but it's the town people 
are are part of this atmosphere, but it's not them being creepy or anything like that. It's them like going, you need to deal with this problem. Don't run away from it. We're going to force it on you if you don't do it. It, it just works so fucking well for me. And it's very weird because I can't think of another movie where I would describe the atmosphere as as battling against the adventure. Battling against the journey. Not wanting it, but it being forced upon you. And it's just very unique to me. And it's something I've, I've always loved. The music definitely helps. The scenery definitely helps. The characters definitely help. It, it's just, to me, this is... A, a great atmosphere, but I do think it's more subtle. I don't think it's in your face atmosphere at all. Um, I think the first time I watched this, I probably wouldn't have not ranked the atmosphere so high. It definitely took me a little bit to, to like understand it, at least the way I understand it. Um, and, and figure out the way to say it with the whole battling the adventure, the resistance to that adventure. Wait, well, like you... I said, I'll go into it further when I get into scenery and set design. Okay, well, we're moving on to scenery and set design then. Jay, go right ahead. Uh, I gave it an 8 with atmosphere. Uh, everything looked like I would expect the the locales to look. <laughs> um, I don't have much experience on a boat or in a small fishing town, but it looked enough like it was supposed to look to me, so... I don't really have, uh, you know, I didn't notice anything too out of place or anything that didn't make any sense, again, to me with my limited knowledge of these kind of locations. So I gave it an eight. All right, Kenneth, get deep. All right, so that in the, the this is the difference here for this type of thing. See, the scenery and set design, I gave it nine. Because if uh, for everything that you're looking at in this type of thing, this 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 is where this is the vision in my head. This particular thing is what I would expect to see in a place like new England or, or Newfoundland or, 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 uh, up around the, the, the higher parts of the Pacific Northwest and things like that. This, this is what I would expect to see this type of thing, you know? So that right there, the scenery and set design, I think is great for, you know, uh, showing exactly where, you know, where you're at, what you're doing, things like that. So I think, I think the reason why I don't feel like the atmosphere is as intense for score wise for me personally is because the scenery and set design to me is what is what sets up the look and the feel, you know what I'm saying? Because it's like, it's hard for me to explain because the difference in the overall tone and then like, like for instance, you were saying just a few minutes ago how you're talking about how it's gray and 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 whatever else, and it's kind of giving this this overall loom to it. Well, see, the thing about it is, is the difference there is I think the set design is what is what is what does that because in these types of areas, it's like that all the time. You know what I'm saying? So I think I think the reason why I don't feel the atmosphere is that way, but the scenery and set design is fantastic, is because of the fact that the scenery and set design is what's doing the work. It's the one. It, it the, to me, that's the one. That's the powerhouse right there. Is the person that decided these locations are the ones that did the did a fantastic job. The scenery and set design is where, in this particular case the 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 power of the the two of atmosphere and set works out that's the one they 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 were the ones that they're the shining star they're the ones that chose the perfect spots to be i mean damn you know you look at the house that nolan lived in sitting right sitting right there on the uh basically like a dock house you know what i'm saying which i I go back to that i think that was you know you got a killer whale trying to kill you and you're going to live in a house that's hanging over water what kind of dumb <laughs> shit is that yeah you know I post that the whale's strong enough to break yeah i mean it's like what kind of dumb shit is that but my point is is that this whole thing of this of this port that they're in is fantastic so I mean, I'm, I'm having a really hard time distinguishing the difference in my head of the way that I see it and the way that I feel it and the difference between the two, but I'm doing the best that I can. But to me, the set is where it's at. The set is the shining. It, it, it's the one, it's like, it's like, you know, how bad would you fuck up if you 
would Jaws be the same if it didn't take place at fucking goddamn uh, Martha's Vineyard? You know what I'm saying? Would it be the same? Would it be as cool? You know what I'm saying? It uh, Jaws would not be the same without, you know, Martha's Vineyard slash Amity Island. It wouldn't. And just like this movie would not be what it is without the locations and sets that they chose for this movie. I feel you. Um, but to me, I, I feel like the set design is part of what helps with the atmosphere. But I also, like I pointed out, like three or four different things that I think work all together with the atmosphere. And while you mostly saw the set design and decided that it wasn't, that it was the workhorse of the atmosphere, while I think the, the set design is amazing, I see the other pieces in the atmosphere that are working for it. Um, I get you. And as for scenery set design, I gave it a nine. The town, the ship, the in finale of the ice, it's all gorgeous. You always feel like you're you're deep in it with them because of the surroundings. Like you're like you, it feels so authentic. So right. Yeah. Um Okay. We move on to acting. Go ahead, Jay. Acting, I gave an eight. Everything was solid. I didn't have a problem with anybody's performance whatsoever. Um, I think the standouts were uh, the Native American guy, uh, the lady who knows all about whales, and the uh, the main captain whale guy. Uh, just remember, I'm terrible with names, and it's not a reflection of the movie itself. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I thought everyone did really well. What did you score it? Eight. Eight, okay. Kenneth? Um, I gave the acting a nine. I thought it was pretty good. Um you know, uh, obviously, again, you know what I'm saying? I mean, the guy that played Nolan takes the cake. I think he did a great job uh, putting across what he was putting across. Um, you know, I kind of I kind of will put this back into the character development. I mean, all the shit that I said, I mean, for the ones that I talked about, the actors to pull off being able to feel the things that I felt for the character development. I mean, you got to give them credit for all that, you know, um, and uh the native guy. I mean, come on, man. That dude's been in so much shit, and he's been in great in, in all of it. I mean, fuck. He was in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, and he was fan-fucking-tastic in that. Yep. You know? So, I mean, it, overall, I mean, I, I think everybody did a fantastic job. So, I gave acting a nine. Word. I, I'm uh, sitting at an eight. Fantastic acting from everyone. Uh, uh, Nolan's character, for sure, is the best acted and that's because his line delivery in this movie is fucking crazy he is so good at delivering lines like whether it's funny or not or you know sad sympathetic um just the way he delivers lines is so good one of my favorite lines he is when they uh miss the shark and he's like 25 foot 50 foot at least like it's just so fucking funny i re i just really fucking love it um so, all right, we move on to special effects, kills, and gore. Jay? Uh, I gave it an eight. The only time the special effects really let me down is when it was so very obviously a uh, a model and they didn't do anything to try and hide it, like when they're pulling the whale out of the water and it looks like it literally looks like a wooden dummy. We, I don't know what they actually made out of, but it's like so stiff without any kind of movement or anything. I'm like, okay, come on, a little effort. But other than that, it was it was good. The the kills were good. The gore was definitely there um, for what we were dealing with. Um, and, yeah, besides that, no complaints. All right, Kenneth. I gave the kills and the gore nine. I really enjoyed it. I mean, you know, I lost one point uh, off of it from being uh, – for what Jay said about the whale – but other than that, I gave it a nine. I mean, I think that the 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 meaty parts for when um, you know the whales get hit by things and stuff like that, I thought that was great. I thought the blood in the water looked pretty uh, pretty legit, even when it was uh, spreading across the boat. I thought that looked pretty good. Um, I liked when uh, when people lost limbs or something like that. It wasn't overdone, you right. know, because a lot of you know, because a lot of times when you watch movies, man, you got fucking goddamn anime style blood where there's fucking blood every goddamn where. 
you know, and 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 it's not really like that. So I, I I like the attention to detail of that. Also, the attention to detail. If you lose a limb or something like that in water, it's gonna it's gonna dilute the blood anyway. So it's not gonna be every fucking where on 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 the object itself. It'll be all in the water and spread out way far. Um, so I really like that. Um, I, I really like the fucking scene where the girl gets her fucking leg bit off. That was fucking fantastic. I, I really enjoyed that <laughs> one too. <laughs> that was so good. Um, so I, 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 I really enjoyed it. I thought the special effects were really fucking good. I thought the gore was good. Um, I was very unnerved when the whale had the fucking baby. You know what oh, I'm saying? Fuck me. Upside down. I, I was mean, so that- sad and mad at Jerry at the same time. I mean, that shit had me fucked up. I was like, oh, my God. Uh, you know, I was so depressed at that moment. I agree with you, man. I was just like, what the fuck is going What am I watching? Because I hate watching movies that have animal shit in it like that, you know? And so it's, it, it was just, it, it definitely had me fucked up. So overall, I gave the, the special effects kills gore a nine. I really, really, really enjoyed it. Well, y'all are welcome. First of all, um, I came in with an eight. I really do like the kills in the movie because it's not like it's the orca just trying to eat, but to actually harm these people. Yeah, he's fucking pissed. Um, you know, he's either biting body parts off or he's drowning them. It's just really brutal. Um, and when we do get gore in the movie, it's it's spectacular in the way that it's keeping with the air of realism that the movie's going for. And... Obviously, the leg of Bo Derek coming off is just fucking great. That is awesome. I also like um, when Novak uh, gets, like, Novak's like the first death where he just comes up and bites him and takes him down off of the fucking mass. Um, just really fucking great. Um, the only special effect in the movie that I really don't like is when the harpoon hits the whale uh, at the end of the movie because it feels like it just hits paper and you can see this like just hole and it's like that shouldn't be a hole um by the way the harpoons really look like that because i don't know but like i want it, was, it it was like a spear from fucking a fantasy movie man you know what i'm saying i could see conan the barbarian walking around with that fucking thing i was like holy fuck well do they really yeah, look like that yeah they're made to be able to like when you stab in they can like hook onto like bone and stuff so that you can like either cause more damage or it helps you with bringing it towards you yeah especially those old school ones they're pretty fucking because like you don't you don't want the yeah so either way um just fantastic all right Ooh, now we get to my two the two categories that i'm most interested for this movie here we go (laughs) oh get ready for some talking all right Number nine, monster slash killer. Jay, go ahead. So to clarify, I originally toyed with the idea of labeling the monster killer as the captain and scoring this category as him um, because he's the aggressor and the whale is the victim. And if this was, say, I spit on your grave, it's the same as that chick getting revenge and all the rapists. Um but the movie is presenting the whale as the monster, um, and so that's kind of what I went with. Um, but so just to clarify that, uh, I consider that I personally consider the whale the hero. All of its actions are justified, and uh, they get what's coming to them. Those fucking assholes. Uh, monster Killer. I gave it eight. Uh, I fucking love that this is an animal movie with a backstory for the animal, and it's and. They chose an intelligent enough animal to get revenge like this, and it does so, and I fucking love that. Uh, I was rooting for the whale the entire time. I just, I, I, I love the setup for this movie and the way that they executed uh, the monster and its story. All right, Kenneth. Um, all right, so I gave both of these categories, because I'm just going to go into Hero 2. I gave both of these categories a seven. And the reason why I did that is for the very same reasons that Jay said. I am back and forth between who's the killer, who's the hero, everything. I am back and forth between both of them. You know, because it's just like I can see points on both sides. You know, because like like Jay was saying, the monster is set up to be the whale. But, you know, 
people like us who, who think further into things and whatever else know that them um, the I, I mean and i'm pretty sure that the filmmakers did this on purpose where you're where you're back and forth you know in jay's case he's not back and forth he made a solid decision but i'm back and forth i'm just like what the fuck you know so i gave both of those a seven just because it was like I just wanted to leave it there instead of like going higher or lower or anything else like that. I just wanted to leave it at a good solid score and let it ride from there. So for me, when it comes to the monster killing category, to me, Nolan is the monster. This is human greed dominating against the natural world. This is exactly what eco horror is man against nature. Normally it's some scientists or something in the wrong, creating an uncontrollable, monster but in this one it's a man making a mistake becoming the monster by invading and attacking a family uh he kills the mother and baby and then the husband comes for revenge so for me this is clearly a movie where the human is is not only the monster but but specifically nolan is the killer and it's not a a thing of like someone polluting or uh you know creating some bizarre creation monster hybrid thing it it is man versus nature in its most core sense and to me that makes nolan the monster slash killer of the movie and so i gave it a nine um which means we now go into hero which we already know kenneth gave it a seven so it'll be just me and Jay on this one, and then Kenneth may add something. But uh, Jay, what do you got for Hero? Uh, I gave it a six because I hate Nolan. <laughs> and as I discussed earlier, I originally wanted to score the monster as Nolan and the hero as the whale. But just in case nobody else felt that way, I didn't. Uh, so these are a little bit flopped. But I just, uh, I don't like him. I, I He's a scummy human. And he deserves what he gets. Fair enough. Um, <laughs> I, just, I, I really didn't like him. That's the start of the movie just angered me so much with the whales crying. I just, nothing he can do could ever make me like him. Uh, and so I was just done from that moment on wishing for his death. Fair enough. Um, I am going with a nine for hero. Uh, the orca is the hero as it hunts down for the killer of his <laughs> wife and unborn child. It yep. goes to any length to get justice. It's a sympathetic and noble hero. Um, Kenneth, do you have any any comments towards what we've said? Nope. Okay. We move on to... <laughs> next, next time we should clarify these. <laughs> nope. No clarifying. No talking beforehand. Uh, better. Next, we move uh, on to score soundtrack design. Jay, take it away. Uh, solid seven. Um, nothing really stood out, but nothing was really bad. Um, I, this is the category I had the least to say just because I don't ever pay attention to the music, um, unless it takes me out of the movie. And then I'm like, oh, gross, but nothing really did that. Uh, the whale screeching sound was unnerving, uh, and it made me feel really terrible. I'm glad I could do that for you. Uh, (laughs) Kenneth, what about you? Um, I gave the score on the soundtrack an eight. I thought it was really good. Um, I love soundtracks that are like this because it automatically, when you hear it, has that 70s feel to it. Yeah. So I really enjoy soundtracks like that. Um, and again, you know, like what Jay said, the the sounds of the whales and stuff like that was very unnerving. Um, but overall, I thought it was really, really good. Um, I enjoyed it. I think it did a good job at, in in moments capturing what it needed to capture. So I gave it a solid eight. I thought it was real good. I'm also coming in with an eight. I think the music does such a good job helping convey the sadness and putting that on top of the whale sounds. It is just some heartbreaking stuff. I really feel that that main uh, song that's used in this movie to to a hyper extent, uh, which is rare for me. But for this movie, it really does hit me. So, we move on to everyone's favorite category, Scare Factor. Jay. Ah! Uh, again, seven. Um, I mean, I guess if I had murdered a whale's family, I might be scared, but I don't ever plan on doing that. So, it was hard for me to be in this uh, 
in this situation in a mindset, and so it didn't really scare me. I felt bad for the whales at the beginning. That was the only part where I was anxious. The rest of the time, I was like, yeah, kill the fuckers. <laughs> so uh, I this didn't really give me any kind of anxiety or make me nervous or anything like that. Fair. Uh, Kenneth, scare factor. I'll give it a five. I really didn't find the movie to be scary versus, you know, like I've said before, just unnerving and depressing. You know, I, I think... I think this movie um, is is just a, uh, a an exaggerated depiction of you know uh, things that that go on in real life that I think people at some point in time should really take heed to think about. You know what I'm saying? I mean, like like this movie is the anti Free Willy to a degree. You know what I'm saying? Where in Free Willy, you've got this whole dynamic of this little boy who befriends this whale and shit like that, you know, and it's all, you know, yada, 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 great and blah, blah, blah. And then you've got things in reality that really happen like in this movie. And then it's just exaggerated a bit to to just give it more pop for people to watch. So as for it being scary, no, it's not really scary. It's more of, okay... Here is hyper realism, and we want you to feel fucked up about it. Yeah, uh, I, funny enough, I may be one of the only people who saw Orca before they saw um, Free Willy for our kind of age range. Well, maybe Jamie Sammons. Jamie Sammons probably saw Orca well well before she saw Free Willy. She's probably the only person in that category with me. It's just us two at the bar for that probably. one. Probably. Um, <laughs> But I gave Scare Factor a six. Uh, the movie never scared me even as a kid. Um, I do freak out at the fetus, but that wasn't scared as much as maybe just weird. I do feel like this movie is, is a horror movie, but it's not a horror movie in the sense of scaring you. It's a horror movie in, in the sense of really making you come to terms with your feelings about animals and uh someone whose job is to hunt them down uh and really makes you confront that this is a movie that is hard to put yourself in because it is so unique which is something like me and kenneth talked about a lot where we like to put ourselves in a movie uh it's you can't really do that in this movie it's just too unique and too personal so i I could only give it a a six and honestly i probably could have went lower yeah and i mean this is one of them situations where it's just like, you know, uh, from previous recordings that we've done and stuff like that, you know, uh, uh, everybody knows how I feel about, you know, cruelty to animals and things like that. But I also have that opposite side of it where I understand the need to go out and, and hunt to feed yourself and things like that. I in no way condone going out and killing an animal for money or for sport. I, I do not condone that in any way, shape, form, or fa- shape, form, or fashion. So that's the reason why movies like this hit me a little bit harder because I'm like, I can't get on the bandwagon of Nolan being a hunter because he, in my personal opinion, you're hunting for the wrong reasons. You know, so I think I think this movie did a really, really good job uh, uh, of putting that perspective out there, like I've said before, but like I. Also, like I said before, it's just, you know, it wasn't scary to me. It's more of a, like I said, hyper-realism to change your perspective on things. I would see this more of a, uh, if you really think about it, if this movie were, if a movie like this were to come out now, I don't think that this movie would be really as considered as much of a horror movie as it would be some form of, uh, like, um, uh, uh, Damn, my mind just went blank on the term that I'm looking for here, but uh, like kind like of a, a raising social awareness kind of thing. Yeah, I th- that's that's exactly what I think this movie. I, I know there's I know the term you're thinking of, but I can't. I also can't remember the actual where, term. Where it's got a fucking underlining social commentary. Yeah, there you go. That's what I'm looking for. Yeah, that that's what I feel like. That if this movie were to be made now, that's what the, that's what it would be about. This would be more of an anti cruelty to animals movie versus a horror movie. That's fair. Yeah, but then the whale would be CG the entire time. That's true, but <laughs> well, like get the people who did uh, what was it Into the Sea, the one with uh, Thor. 
Chris Hemsworth. I haven't watched that one. Super good movie. Super good. I will check it out. Um, all right. We move on to entertainment slash rewatchability. Jay. Did you give us your scare factor score? Yeah, I said six. Oh, okay, because Kenneth was the last one talking, so I was like... Yeah, no, no, I, he, he was <laughs> responding to what I said. That's right, okay. I'm always uh, so long-winded. <laughs> yeah, entertainment rewatchability. Uh, I gave it a seven. While I found the movie entertaining, I found myself with no desire to sit down and watch it again. Um, it's, it's a good movie. Like, it's a solid movie. Um, and it's one I may watch if somebody was ever over and they were like, man, I really just want like some kind of like animal related. And I'm like, oh, well, Orca is a good movie. If you've never seen that. Um, but it doesn't have the same reach rewatchability as something like crawl or, um, Lake Placid has for my, for my tastes, in my opinion. Uh, plus listening to the whale cry is just hard. <laughs> it's it's hard for me man uh so i gave it a seven that's fair kenneth um i gave it a four um Ooh. yeah i gave it a really low score and and this is another one of those where i'm probably like getting way too into my own head but uh you know this movie while it was good i think i, th- I think you, when you're watching a movie like this you've really got to uh, search inside yourself on what you consider to be entertaining, you know, because like I said, this is a very serious movie and it, it's almost to me like, like looking at it from a perspective of, is it entertaining or is it just the fact that it's put together? Well, it's got a fucking fantastic story and whatever else, but do I probably, will I ever watch this movie again? Probably not just because, uh, this movie made me feel fucked up and it, it, it didn't make me feel fucked up in a good way. You know what I'm saying? It made me feel fucking fucked up, you know? So it's, uh, I look at it as I will give all the credit that is due to this movie, but will I watch it again? Probably not. It's Unless a, I have to for another show. It's a, this movie's an intense movie. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a creature feature version of a Serbian film. You watch it once and you go, that's really well made, but I don't know if I could stomach <laughs> watching this again. Yeah. Right. I mean, this, like I said, this is an intense movie. So oh, yeah. for, um, for an in- entertainment and, and, and rewatchability, I got to give it a four because, you know, again, you have to search inside yourself for what you feel is entertaining. And I will probably never rewatch this movie. That's, I, I mean, I think you're a little low, but I also understand where you're coming from. I came in at a seven uh, this one can be a hard watch and, but I do watch it every, every few years I watch it. Um, but it's not one I could watch a lot. Like, I can't watch this once a year, but every couple of years I could, because it's less of popcorn entertainment and more serious filmmaking. And it is right. one that I like to make people watch so that I can be like, look, before Sharknado made all this genre into bullshit, <laughs> there <sighs> were amazing creature features uh, that that are up there with the best of the best. And Orca is one that I'm like, if you watch this movie, it's going to affect you. And if it doesn't affect you, I, you're really fucking weird and I don't want to talk to you because you're probably like a chud in disguise. And that's not cool. Um, yeah, well, I will say this. I'm glad movies like Crawl are coming out where they're actually bringing some fucking strength back to the genre. Oh, God, yes. I am so glad (laughs) to see some actual movies coming back that are not goofy or not funny, but they're serious. 47 Meters Down, Crawl, uh, fucking, uh, what's the one with Blade Likely? Blade Uh, Likely. Shallows. Shallows. Uh, I'm really glad to start seeing these movies making a comeback that way. Um, So, yeah, I gave it a seven. I gotta say, yeah, out of all of them, man, fucking, Crawl was fucking great. I saw that in the theater. It was fucking awesome. So I'm yeah, glad I, that they're they're bringing they're they're getting away from the fucking silliness of of that garbage movie Sharknado. I just picked up that Blu-ray because it was on sale for like ten bucks. Nice. I love Sharknado. Crawl. No crawl. <laughs> I saw it in the theater too. I just haven't had a chance to to pick it up yet, and so I like, snagged it for like ten bucks. I was going to say you spent ten bucks on that trash. No, I don't like. I don't. I like. Sometimes I like the. I don't want to get sidetracked, but sometimes I like those bad on purpose movies. But I can't. The Sharknados just don't do it for me. The tongue-in-cheek humor misses on almost every beat, in my opinion. Yeah, I don't like like 
I did like some of them when it was like Sharktopus, but I but they but they just started getting really bad with with like just a wide range of of New Jersey shark attack and three headed testicle shark attack and yeah and yeah. Exorcist shark and <laughs> like it, it, a snow shark avalanche shark uh I Jimmy Pesto shark Luguini shark Exorcist shark is a thing Exorcist shark is a thing. I know. I still can't believe that it was real. I, the first time you ever brought it up to me, I thought you were fucking joking. I well, and I love I including it, it. I was like, I I've done this list before where I start naming off uh real stupid shark movies, but then I start throwing in ones that are fake, uh, just to see if I'm anyone saying. catches thought, it. Yeah. So the first time you ever said that, I was just like, oh, that's another one of those that he's just fucking bullshitting about. And then when I actually saw that it exists, I was like. What the fuck, man? Yeah. They're, it's uh, bad. They're just reaching way too far for some fucking garbage. Yeah, it's bad. All right, uh, we move on to pop culture. Jay, take it away. This right, Also, I'll so, say this. This is probably the hardest category uh, to score tonight. So, no one so feel bad. Here's... I gave this a six, and this is the reason why. I tend to base this category on... Basically, since I spend so much time on Facebook and in horror Facebook groups, how often it's talked about, basically, is, is the how I start with the metric. Um, then I move on to, have I heard about the movie before? And and kind of things like that to kind of gauge where it's at. Things like Freddy, Jason, Michael, anybody who's ever watched a horror movie knows about those characters. Their impact on pop culture is huge. Um, with this movie, I had never actually even heard of it until... Jerry talked about it on whatever episode he very first mentioned it on. Um, Cause I know we've mentioned it a couple times throughout our, our four years of recording. So I'd never heard of it and I never even watched it until now. Uh, so I gave it a six just because not a lot of people ever bring it up. Um, I would say I would put it firmly in the underrated category. And I mean that term literally because people seem to use those, those terms wrong all the time, but I would put it solidly in the underrated category. Uh, nobody really talks about it. Nobody ever really brings it up. They don't mention it um, too often. So yeah, that's where I landed. Yeah, guys, the conjuring is really underrated. I don't understand. Like shut the fuck up. What is wrong <laughs> with you? If you want to laugh, just like I'm in a lot of Facebook horror groups, uh, but most of them are podcast based. But the like two or three I'm in that's not podcast based, I rarely comment uh, because people are so fucking ridiculous and stupid <laughs> in those groups. And but I'm in there because I like seeing when people post just the dumbest shit. So and that happens at least once a day. Exactly. So it's fun. All right, Kenneth, pop culture. Um, I gave it a five. From what I understand, and I and I mean, I, I just put it in the middle. Because from what I understand, this movie really didn't get a whole lot of, you know, uh, praise or, or, or talked about, really. Um, I'm in the same boat as Jay, where if it hadn't been for Jerry, I don't think I would have ever known this movie fucking existed. Um, you know, so it's, it's just one of those things. And then now, you know, it's just like, as of pop culture shit and whatever else, we don't really... This movie's never really talked about. But at the same time, I mean, it's got, you know, good actors in it, well-known actors and whatever else. So I know. And then I looked it up. Uh, I looked it up online to see what people had said about it and stuff like that. And most of it was all all positive. So I was like, OK, well, it's got at least some following behind it. So I'm going to throw it in the middle. Yeah, that's fair. Um, now, I will say this. When it comes to creature features on this podcast, I would be considered the somewhat of an expert on it um so for me in pop culture for this one i gave it a four this is not a well-known film even in the horror genre outside of creature feature heads like myself um it's one of the the it's it's a film that people skip because of the reputation as a jaws ripoff which is completely unfair it is not a jaws ripoff while it does follow the trend of jaws it is not a jaws ripoff um, of course, if they watched it, they would realize how wrong they are. Uh, but it's barely known in horror, which also means it's not known in the mainstream at all. The reason that I saw this movie uh, so young, and I know about it, is because when I was young, I would buy the 1970s Marvel Godzilla run. 
And for some reason, that run had, when it first came out, had tons of advertisements for Orca. In fact, on my bookshelf, I have three Godzilla books framed. I've got uh, a Godzilla IDW uh, signed. I've got Godzilla Marvel number one uh, signed by Stan Lee. And then I have Godzilla uh, issue two from Marvel, Marvel, but it's actually turned around because the back page of it is an advertisement for Orca. So I have the Orca advertisement showing. Huh. That's cool. <clears throat> yeah, so because of that, you know, that's how I, I ended up finding out about the movie. And my grandfather eventually rented it for me to be able to watch it. Um, so I, I'm a huge Orca fan because of that. Um, but even I can say it's not well known. Even in the creature feature realm, because a lot of people in the creature feature realm now seem to tend to lean to this stupid, crazy uh, Sharknado version. But when you get to, like, the real, real creature feature heads, you know, like, people like me and, like, Jamie Sammons, like, we're the ones that are pushing Orca. We're the ones that are saying, no, Orca is is top five. Easy. When it comes to creature features, it's top five. When it comes to eco-horror, you need to see this movie. It's one of the best 70s uh, movies out there, period. So, it, it, this movie is highly underrated, highly unseen, and um, I, for people who have seen it, they always praise it. Um, and it's one that that definitely needs more light shined on it. And I'm really glad we got to do this podcast where we could actually shine light on it. But speaking of that, we now get into the last category, uh, which is representation of its subgenre or horror in a whole. Um, a lot of you know this is one of the newest categories that we added along with like the uh, cinematography technical aspects. Um, and I find that this this category is one of my newest favorite ones to write what I feel about for. So with that being said, uh, Jay, representation. So I haven't watched a ton of, of creature feature movies. It's probably a genre that I'm I'm very low in uh in knowledge on uh with uh giallos being lower uh so this is probably like second lowest um so just based on the ones that i've seen uh i gave it an eight it's a pretty impactful movie um where we may not want to rewatch it for the reasons we stated earlier um, too often, I think it's at a great example of how you can do a unique creature feature movie. Like all the ones I watched, besides like Creature Made in a Lab or Mutated Animal, um, there's really not a lot of them that give a backstory. Like think about something that was like super mainstream, like Anaconda. Like that's big stake in the jungle. That's the backstory. This one gives the animal not only motivation but a backstory, and that is so unique out of all the ones that I've seen. Um, that I think is an amazing representation of it. Yeah, it, it's uh, it's giving the animal more personality than it's doing its natural instincts. Like, it's actually pursuing its feelings. And th that's crazy for a creepy feature. Uh, Kenneth, what do you got for representation? Um, Alright, so... When it comes to this... I have a bit of an issue because um, I don't know. I can't remember exactly why I scored it at a six, but I feel like I didn't do it justice. But since I've already given you the scores, I'm stuck. Um, Cause I probably would have, I probably would have put this at a nine. Um, I can't remember exactly what I was thinking at the time when I wrote down a six. Um, if I could but, guess, I would say you were thinking I'm really going to disappoint Jerry tonight. No, it wasn't that. <laughs> Um, you know, I, I could, I could think of a whole bunch of other ways to, to disappoint you, you know, like, uh, you know, I could tell you that I was going to, you know, come in your mouth or something like that. And then not, um, wow, that's fucked up, man. If you ever <laughs> did that to me, I would kick you off the podcast. <laughs> See, You'd be canceled. I can, re I can really disappoint you. But, uh, but no, I mean, I can't remember exactly why I put it at a six. I think it was because at that moment, it was I was writing down my scores and I was still in this thing about 
what you said earlier, and I'm going to admit this, where I was in the in the in the in the area of it being a Jaws ripoff, and the more I thought about it, and the more I've you know went into it, like the characters and the development and all the rest of that shit, the more I went into it, you know, because I don't when I'm when I'm doing my scores, I don't do them in order, you know, I do them as I think about it, or if I'm looking at the page. So I've got I've got all of them in order that we go in it, at it at but I don't mean I score them at that point in time. So I can't remember exactly why I put it down as a six, but I feel like I didn't do it enough justice. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and admit that. And I'm going to think that it should be up at a nine because I think it does a fantastic job at representing the genre. And I think that I completely agree with you. It's underrated. And I think more people that are into creature features should check this out and never watch Sharknado again. Agreed. Uh, so obviously I gave this a fucking 10. Uh, this is one that does represent the creature feature genre in a great way as it takes everything serious and does a good job explaining itself. It's also very unique in the genre with it being a revenge from the creature. It's an easy top five for any serious lover of the genre, of the subgenre. Um, and yes, I will fight that to the death of people who call this a Jaws ripoff. In fact, most movies that people call a Jaws ripoff, I disagree. It's not a Jaws ripoff. It is following the Jaws trend, and that is two different things. A Jaws ripoff is Cruel Jaws. That is clearly a Jaws ripoff. Something like Orca or Piranha are not Jaws ripoffs. They are following a specific trend. But Jaws didn't create the creature feature film. It did not create the uh, eco-horror film. It happens to put be the one that put it on the map. But it did not create it. So please, people. Movies like fucking Devilfish and Tentacles and uh, shit like that. They're not Jaws ripoffs. They are trend followers. Which constantly happens in this genre. You know, movies that came out after Paranormal Activity or Blair Witch, you're not going to sit there and go, oh, well, Urban Legend is a Scream ripoff. Or I Saw What You Did Last Summer is a Scream ripoff. They're not ripoffs. They're following a trend. A ripoff is clearly taking the fucking story and changing minor things about it to make it that. Cruel Jaws, prime fucking example. If you haven't seen Cruel Jaws, it's probably for the best but still it uh is also known as jaws five uh those italians they love to rip off people um so yeah yeah exactly (laughs) uh so yeah this is a clear 10 for me uh and with that here are our final scores uh coming in the highest is uh me with 118 points Jay uh, is in the middle with 111 points, and Kenneth is at the bottom with 107 points. Uh, So pretty high scores. Everything is above 100. Uh, That's that's pretty fucking solid, guys. If that's not a good enough recommendation for you, I don't know what is. Um, With that being said, let's go ahead and jump into Alligator... You know it, you love it, from 1980, a baby alligator slushed down a Chicago toilet and survives by eating discarded laboratory, wait, INDB, what the fuck, survives by eating discarded rabbit laboratory rats? They're dogs. They are dogs. Discarded laboratory dogs injected with growth hormones. The small reptile grows gigantic and escapes the city sewers and goes on a rampage. Uh, this movie is amazing because it stars Robert Forrester, rest in peace, my dude, um, playing our, our young homicide detective named David. It also has Robin Riker as Marissa. Um, this has a fantastic fucking cast and it's directed by Louis Teague. Uh, I love Louis Teague. A lot of you know him from directing Cujo or like Cat's Eye, um, but you know he 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 also did just a lot a lot of fucking really solid movies and he did some acting but most people know him for the director of Cujo and Cat's Eye. So with that being said, let's let's get into this one. 
Uh, we start off with story script, and this time I guess we will. Uh, I guess we'll just go in reverse. Well, no, we won't go in reverse because yeah, it kind of it kind of fucks Jay up. Um, but if Jay, if you're fine with it, we'll just go in reverse. Yeah, I, it's it's whatever, man. Okay, story script. I get to start. Uh, I gave it a seven. As far as eco horror goes, it hits all the notes. Uh, it has the Suedo science, the experts, the show off, the main character that no one believes. It has a plausible scenario caused by a corrupt company abusing the rules of nature and causing the monster to wreak havoc. Um, well, I don't think it does anything to blow away our heads in the story itself. It is very well put together and in, in about every aspect, but it's still a basic story. But it does come off better than that. But I do have to knock off points for having way too many points that are like Jaws. You have the cop, a scientist, a hunter, a corrupt mayor. Hell, the journalist taking pics in the sewer uh, and then getting killed and eaten by the alligator and taking pictures of the alligator is fucking straight from Jaws 2. <laughs> this one is more of a Jaws ripoff than Orca is, for the fucking record. Um but it definitely has a different mood than Jaws does, which I really like. So, um, nothing to blow your, your mind away, but it still does everything solid. So, this is a good hand job for me. I give it a 7. Kenneth! I gave it a 6. And, I mean, uh, the reason why I, I scored it 1 under you is just because, you know, uh, while it was a good story, it's very... Uh, Basic. Yeah, that's kind of what I was looking for. It is. It's just basic. I mean, it's got a lot of the tropes. Uh, it follows the same kind of timeline like what you pointed out. I mean, the whole nine. I mean, it's just, you know, it's pretty straightforward from beginning to end. You know what I'm saying? And it gives you what you need to know to know why this big-ass goddamn alligator is down there. So I gave it a six. I mean, yep. it wasn't nothing special. I mean, but it was enough to keep you going through it. All right, Jay, bring up the, the tail end of story and script. Uh, I'm right there with you guys. I gave it a seven. Um, I scored it like a seven for the same reasons you guys said. I just uh, didn't go much lower than that. Uh, but yeah, same thing. It's it's a serviceable story, and it's there pretty much just to give us set pieces with a giant alligator, and that's all you really need when it comes to a creature feature. That's true. All right, cinematography, technical aspects. Uh, I gave it a nine. I love the sewer scenes where we have light playing off the water. Um, the mixing of special effects and the real alligator actually comes off way more smoothly in here than it does in Orca. Um, and this movie has just so many amazing shots. They did such a great job. There is a scene where um, David and uh, a young cop named Kelly are searching the, the sewers. And they're looking at the map. And all of a sudden, for, for a brief moment, you actually see the alligator right behind them. And it's so fucking good. Um, I can name off so many scenes where the cinematography is just fantastic, but I won't do that so that other people can talk. Um, so I gave it a nine. Kenneth? I also gave it a nine. I thought it looked great. I mean, to me, it was like a slasher movie. Or like, like legit, like a slasher movie. Like, I could totally see, you know what I'm saying? You could see a fucking uh, a, a serial killer goddamn moseying around and in, in his hunting ground is, you know, the, the sewers. So I think... I think it was done great like that. Um, and like you said, with the, 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 the way the darkness is put together and, and whatever else to, to kind of blend it. And then the shots themselves to be able to work in such low light and be able to do what they did in such low light. I think the guy, I think the guy should have fucking got an award for that itself because this movie came out, what, 1980? Yes, sir. Yeah. So for 1980 to be able to do what you're doing, you know, with, you know, two thirds of this movie in pitch fucking black, you know, of the sewers where you only, the only light you're really getting is reflecting off of, you know, shitty water. I got to give the guy credit. I think they did a fucking fantastic job at, at conveying what they needed to convey with these shots. I thought it was great. 100%. Jay, bring us up. All right. Uh, cinematography, technical aspects. I gave an eight to, uh, again, I'm on board with you guys. I just ended up scoring it a little bit lower. Um, I don't really know why. Um, but yeah, that uh, where you were talking about the one scene where you see the alligator behind it. I'm a huge fan of when movies do shots like that and there isn't a music cue 
to accompany it. I think the music cue ruins the the effect. I think if if there's a music cue to draw your attention to it, it's less impactful than if it's just there. And that was just kind of there. If you are looking away from the screen or anything when that comes up, you miss it. You don't even know it happened. Um, I was so happy when that happened. I was like, oh man, that's such a, I just, it was an awesome shot. Uh, but yeah, I think the movie was shot really well. Um, and I definitely enjoyed it. Yeah, I, I got to bring up another scene because I don't know exactly when I'll, I would be able to bring this up. But um, the pool scene with the kid being walked off. The Oh, I know. I have that actually written in a thing. We'll get to that. We'll get to it. I'm going to save it. Okay. Uh, character and character development. I gave it a 9. We absolutely get such a great feel for all of these characters. While really it may feel like there is no actual development in our main character, there really is. He is just so confident in himself uh, that it's hard to come off. But he does have an issue with being with other people that he does overcome at the end. In the beginning of the movie, he is getting himself a dog because if you don't catch it, he actually says his last dog got stolen at a supermarket and he tells this to the pet store owner who we know is stealing dogs. So he probably stole David's dog, that dick. Uh, So he's getting another dog and by the end of it, not only does he have a dog, but he has a girlfriend. He he really does kind of grow and he gets over this fear of connecting with people because of uh, the backstory of him losing a partner who got shot by his gun. Um, but not only that, like we, we get to know the social pressures of, you know, our main scientist and him having to deal with his rich soon to be father-in-law. We get uh, Marissa, who grew up loving alligators, and her falling in love with a guy, even though he's starting to get a receding hairline. That was very brave of her. Um, The the boss cop, uh, fucking uh, uh, Chief Clark, he's fantastic. We get, you know, him having to battle between... Uh, being friends with David and wanting him on the squad to, well, you push too hard, now the mayor says you gotta go, like, which is a classic staple of, of cop movies, but, um, I see a lot of character development in all these characters, I just think it doesn't shine through as well, which I'm assuming will probably be represented more in y'all's score, but, so maybe I'm blowing this one a little too much, honestly, but let's find out. Kenneth, character development. Uh, the same thing that you said, score and all. Really? You gave it a 9? Yep. I don't feel like I was blowing it now. Jay, what did you give it? Uh, I came in at a 7 because I felt like you said I would feel like. uh, But after listening to your explanation, um, I would, if it was a thing that we did, change my score. But it's not a thing we do, so that's going to stay at a 7. Yeah, David's (laughs) confidence in this movie, like that character, hides a lot of the development that that it makes it harder to piece together. Um, cause I, I don't know. I guess, I guess we focus on the receding hairline part too much. Um, <laughs> I like his smoothness. <laughs> yeah. I like Smart, when he, when he, and great set of tits. <laughs> yeah. I like when he throws his, uh, fucking keys, but like keys behind him and then catches them. I thought that was dope. Um, I funny enough, like... if you watch the TV version of this and the scene where he says beautiful tits, they edit and it says beautiful eyes and it's very weird. <laughs> I love that. I feel like this movie is like if you took – and my cat's in heat again, so she's out there making all kinds of racket. That's um, fine. Cat noises are always allowed on this podcast. Yeah. yeah she's uh, – you know, I think I've recorded before when she was in heat. Um, uh, I feel like this movie is like if you took Dirty Harry and put an alligator in it, that's kind yeah. of what this would be. You know? Because, <laughs> I mean, he's definitely – you know, the detective guys definitely got that that surly, you know, uh, troubled lawman kind of thing going. You know, kind of the same kind of shit that we or that that we see in old westerns. You know what I'm saying? That's how he starts off, and then he gets his his love interest, which definitely which brings him out of that surliness a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Like if you were fucking uh, watching Wyatt Earp, you know, go after a fucking killer alligator. You know, that's kind of that's kind of what I feel like this movie's like. I, I really enjoy it. So I agree with you. Um, all right. We move on to pacing and editing. I gave this a 10. 
This is one of the best paced movies I have ever seen in any genre. It is fun from the beginning to the end. It never slows down. Ever. There is not a single wasted moment in this fucking flick. And the editing of the live action alligator on miniature sets versus the prop alligator, I always feels like just works really well. So, I, I full on fucking 10 on this one. I don't know if we've ever given a 10 to the pacing editing category, but this is one where I think it absolutely deserves it. Kenneth? Eight. I mean, there was a couple of spots where I was just like, ah, you know, like, um, the, <laughs> I don't think, I don't know exactly where I would want to put this, but like the scene where the alligator gets to the people and damn, uh, they're at the party or whatever. The, the, oh, people, the wedding, the rich people yeah. party. Yeah. It's a wedding. And, and I feel like that the crushing of the car went on for far too fucking long. I, I was sitting there when I was watching it and I was like, my God, what the fuck is going to happen if he's going to, if the, if this alligator is going to fucking kill this guy, this old bald man, just get it the fuck over with. You know what? In retrospect, I probably should take out a point because not only is that one, that, that scene, you're right on that, but it also, the editing is kind of bad with that. With the tail yeah. hitting and stuff. So you're right. I yeah. should probably take it down a notch. I got really excited. Um, <laughs> Cause Jay, I mean, I mean, that was probably one of the worst, one of the worst parts editing wise for me. I mean, I think, I think that whole fucking segment is misplaced in my personal opinion. I, I mean, I get what they were trying to convey by putting it there, but at the same time, I'm like, did we really need to put that specifically where the alligator went for that specific person in there? Uh, uh, yeah, I it mean, definitely feels forced considering that's like the the comeuppance of the person who's responsible for right, d you, you know, know I mean? polluting the sewer. I mean, I get you know where they were going with on why the alligator is fucking huge and why it never stops eating and whatever else. But come on, for it to, for it to miraculously end up at exactly the right place and the right time to kill this motherfucker. You know, I, I, that whole segment right there was just, that was the only big part of the movie that I had a problem with. That's that. fair. So, so that's, that's the reason why I put it at an eight because that whole, that whole thing was just kind of weird. All right. Jay, what did you put it at? Uh, I'm right in the middle of you guys. I'm, I'm at a nine. Uh, there were a few parts that I thought were edited oddly, um, so I, but not as much, it didn't bother me as much as it sounded like it bothered Kenneth. And I wasn't as amazed by it as Jerry. So <laughs> I'm right at a nine with it though. It was still a really solid movie and the pacing of it really, um, is what most of the scores for it. It's just paced really well. Even the, the misplaced scenes still keep the flow of the movie going pretty, pretty well in my opinion. Yeah. Okay atmosphere i gave it a six this is one i do wish the movie had more of um but because it almost plays out like a action buddy cop film it never really feels like it has the time to do that the most we really get is being in the sewer uh it gets a little claustrophobic in there um but the music really isn't good enough to help pull it off kenneth um i have a complete opposite on this one as i was before i think the atmosphere of this movie is great you know i give it a nine I thought it was awesome. I mean, you the 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 darkness and utilizing the darkness with I mean, it's like, all right, being in a sewer, you're going to be claustrophobic anyway, okay? And so because it's small confined areas and whatever else. So, you know, so you're going to be you're going to be claustrophobic anyway, but they also utilize the darkness to give you that overall ambiance of the confinement of being inside of it. So it was almost like it made me when I was watching the movie and that it gave me the atmosphere of what it would be like if I were in a cave. And that makes so, sense. And being stuck inside of a cave with this fucking thing that is just huge. There's no way that I'd be able to fight it. And it's insatiable hunger to eat me alive. So, it, it the 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 utilization of the darkness and the utilization of 
of the sound and, and the growling in the background and all the rest of that, all those things kind of coming together, it gave me that eerie, confined, unnerving unease that that I wish I would have gotten from Orca. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't. I I I, I know it's it's kind of weird in comparison to what I said about the atmosphere for Orca, but this one did it for me, whereas the one in Orca did not. Okay, well, Jay, where do you land? Uh, on atmosphere, I landed on an eight. Um, I really all the scenes that take place in the sewer, I think, are the the sound design for them, the the way it's shot, the lighting is is almost perfect for what the movie is going for. Um, it feels almost like a slasher flick at those moments um, with the alligator. You know it's down there. You don't know, quite know where it is. Sometimes it pops up randomly. It feels very much like a slasher flick. And I really dug that so much. Um, it doesn't translate as well on some of the above ground scenes, but just the sewer scenes alone was enough to give me that score. Um, the rest of the movie is is serviceable and fine, but not enough it's not bad enough that it lowers it, and it's not amazing enough that it hires it. So that's I came in at an eight on that guy. Okay, well, we move on to scenery set design. Uh, I gave it an eight. The sewers, the alleyways, the police station, everything just looks real. Uh, it won't blow you away, but it, it, it doesn't really need to. And I know at this point you're going, well, Jerry, that sounds like a hand job. You know what? It would be a hand job. It would be a seven. But in one of the sewer scenes... There is a reference to the movie The Third Man uh, and Orson Welles' uh, character in it. So uh, that gets a full fucking point for me, um, and I give it an 8. Kenneth? I gave it the classic hand job. Because um, you didn't really... know The Third Man thing. That's why. That's part of it. But um, the reason why I did is because the set design itself... Whereas I thought, you know, it was done well at, at, at you know, uh, getting where we needed to be. Um, you know, it's just cityscapes, you know what I'm saying? And, and whatever else I don't there, I think, I think what would have probably beefed it up a little bit is the difference in choices of cityscapes, um, and things like that. But, um, I, I leave it at a seven, but I will say this, there's something about movies that came out around this time period that have the that take place in cities like this that have this odd grittiness to them that is it, 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 once you start paying attention to the way it looks you can pick them all out i know? immediately thought of the first ninja turtles movie uh, well yeah that uh, there you go that's part of it but that uh, but the first ninja turtles movie is a little bit later than what i'm talking about like it's on the tail end of it yeah you know? it's probably one of the last movies to really have that look right but you but but like even down to the the types of cars that are chosen to be in movies like this you know where you've got the you know you've got like the in between where the the shift of where cars like your everyday car is more boxy looking like, you know, like in the seventies, you know, obviously the muscle car was the, was the fucking floater of the seventies. So the muscle cars are the ones that, that really carry that decade. And then you've got later eighties cars where they start coming in into, you know, like trans ams and, and shit like that from other movies that have made mo things popular, like smoking the bandit shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Where they really start uh, start coming in, but you've got like this in between for movies that take place in the cities, especially cop movies, where you've got like just your normal everyday square body type cars, where like the cars almost look like um, the same style of cars that are cop cars, except where without the lights and shit on them. And even in this time period, like the cop cars look different than everything else, but they still kind of got that boxy look to them. And uh, the the darkness in the city and stuff like that, where you can clearly tell that they're doing night shoots instead of doing day shoots and trying to make them look like night shoots. You know what I'm saying? Where where like you know you can see where like the the scenes inside the city are lit in a specific direction, and everything past where the light is there, it's fucking black because it's actually nighttime. And uh, I don't know. Like I, I wish I could think of other examples. Uh, of what I'm talking about, but movies 
that came out around this time period all have that look for that 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 particular style. Um, so you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it at a seven for the scenery and set design, but. I'm not saying that by picking the hand job that it was bad because we all like getting hand jobs. It's just it didn't pop out at me as much as the scenery and set design and the locations that were chosen for, you know, like Orca. Yeah. Well, Jay, how does that pop for you? I gave it a nine. I thought everything for for me, this category is does does everything look like it's supposed to look based on what the story is presenting and does it look good? And in that instance, all the stuff uh, on the surface looked like it was supposed to, like Kenneth said, it doesn't really stand out, but really it's supposed to be every town USA. Right. So, I mean, it's not really supposed to stand out. Um, But again, going back to what I was saying about the sewers and the atmosphere category, the sewer sets were just so great. Like it just, it really, I really love all the scenes that happened in the sewer. Um, and that really affected the score for me. And so that's, that's kind of why I landed on a nine. Like I can, I can understand what Kenneth is saying, but, but for me, just the, uh, the way the sewer is set up makes, stands out so much that the plain Jane of the, of the, the top level scenes, don't bother me or lower my score at all. I guess I guess, I guess what it comes down to what I'm trying to convey is like if you if like let's say you know okay so this movie takes place in Chicago right okay if if you were writing a script and you say you know okay this movie is going to take place in a city you know what I'm saying okay well it doesn't really yeah. matter which city that you're in. You could say you're in New York. You could say that you're in, you know, uh, Chicago or, or pretty much any middle America to East Coast city. You know what I'm saying? Because West Coast cities look a little different. You know, like, obviously, you know, if, if you're watching a movie with San Francisco in it, you can f- totally pick out that it's fucking San Francisco. If not for anything else, by the fucking hills. All right. So, but but in this particular thing, I don't... I think it's the difference between like if you take Orca in Orca, the set design and stuff like that drives the narrative a little versus this. It really doesn't because you can just say, oh, this takes place in a city. But it's almost like if you were telling a story and you're trying to convey to somebody and 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 create in their imagination uh, if 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 it was taking place in the south. OK, so you if, 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 you, if you were trying to create that narrative of the South, there would be key things that you would think about that would create that narrative in your head, stereotypically based on literature that we've had before that creates that to you. The same thing with me and how the set design in Orca for, you know, like I said, New England, Newfoundland and whatever else. I've never really been up there, so I don't know if exactly that's what it looks like. But from an imaginative standpoint, that's what I expect it to look like from uh, different stories and different movies that I've seen and things that I've read. You know, that's what I expect it to look like. That's what my imagination has created in it, it, it for it, you know, so. That, to me, is the reason why that one was so impactful versus this, where it's just like, okay, it's a city, you know, it's in a city with sewers. You know, you could go any direction that you wanted to go. As long as you've got fucking alleyways that are dark with fucking garbage in them, you got a fucking city. That's the reason why the majority of city movies that were filmed around this time were filmed in fucking Toronto and not in the actual city they were in. Yeah, I get it. So that's the reason why the the set design didn't have as much of an impact on me as this did, as Orca did. Does that make sense? Yeah, I get it. That makes sense. I don't know. It's it it didn't affect me that way, but I can understand where you're coming from better now. Right. I'm not trying to shift your opinion. I'm just trying to further explain my opinion. And I'm going to further explain acting. <laughs> <laughs> I gave it a nine. Fantastic acting in this flick. Not a bad actor in the bunch. The realism everyone brings in the delivery lines are just way better than this genre normally gets. Um, th- like every actor I, in this movie, I can point out something that they did just fucking amazing. And I it just it warms my heart to see a movie taken so 
serious and and actually have people who know how to fucking act handle this movie. So I, I gave it a nine. Kenneth? I gave it an eight. Um, I thought everybody did did pretty much fairly well. Uh, the de- guy that did the detective is fucking awesome, but then again, he's awesome in everything he's in. Um, the chick that becomes his love interest, she was fucking hot, and she was cool. Um, so, yeah, I gave it an eight. I mean, I wasn't disappointed, but I didn't think it was the most fantastic shit I've ever seen in my life. So, All right. Jay? Uh, I also gave it an eight. It was, it was good. Super solid all around. Uh, the gator really yelled his the beats fantastic um <laughs> but no seriously uh acting was was very fine nothing nothing wrong with it i love uh i don't know anybody's name uh the the main the main cop guy i love David. that actor uh he's a he's a great actor uh so it's always a treat when he pops up especially as the lead uh so it was uh... all right uh we move on to special effects kills slash gore um, I gave this an 8. The alligator looks amazing, but the kills are pretty basic. We get a lot of tail whipping, a lot of flinging people around. Uh, we also have a lot of, like, slightly off-camera deaths. Um, I do not think going crazy with the blood would have helped the realism in the film, but there are times where I, I just wanted more from the kills. But damn, does that alligator make up for it with how it looks. And, um... I read this on IMDb, and I remember a long time ago, I actually tried to research this and find pictures and stuff, but I never could. But apparently, supposedly, the uh, animatronic alligator for this movie was given to the uh, college football team, the Florida Gators, and it would appear during their halftime shows and stuff. But I've never been able to find an actual picture of this happening. So that that's kind of sad. But, yeah, I give an 8. I, I, I do want more from the kills and gore, but um, the the alligator itself looks fucking phenomenal. Kenneth? I give it a 9, man. Damn near solely based on the fucking alligator. I mean, it looked great. I completely agree with you. Um, even the, the, like the, the combination of, you know, real gators with the fucking animatronic gator and whatever else, I think it was all done super solid. Um there was some of the gore. Oh, I, I agree with you. There was some of the gore that I, I think could have been done a little better. Um, you know, obviously that scene where the fucking, uh, the guy that thinks he's the high and mighty hunter gets eaten whole, you know, that, 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 that affects me on a personal level, which I've talked about before. So, uh, you know, um, that I actually really enjoyed that scene, even though it affected me on a personal level. Um, so I think it was kind of, uh, I think it was a kind of, uh, uh, the gator really fucking led the way. I kind of agree with you on that, you know? So I gave it a nine. I thought it was, I thought they did a fucking great job on that. I also thought they did a great job with like combining, you know, like there were certain instances where you could definitely tell that the, uh, the gator was coming up out of the ground in the model areas and stuff like that. You could tell it, but it still looked really good. And I want to say, was there a couple of shots that were green screen? Cause it looked like there was not, that I can think of off the top of my head, but like, I'm sure if we sat down together and, and watched it, you could point out what you were talking about, and I'd probably have an opinion, but I don't remember any green screen. Yeah, but I, don't, either, I don't remember seeing any green screen either that but, I could tell. But overall, I thought it was good, so. There yeah. might have been some, some matte painting stuff, but, or, or, um, shot and shot stuff, but I don't think any green screen was used. Well, something similar to that. You know what yeah. I'm saying. Something along those lines. But, yeah, I gave it a 9. It was good. All right. Uh, Jay, what did you give it? Uh, I gave it a 7. So this category encompasses a lot with it. Uh, you having to focus on the special effects, but also the kills and the gore. Sometimes they come together. Sometimes they're completely separate. So I looking at it as a whole is kind of where my score ended up. Um the kills are fun, if not a little bit basic. The gore is fine. There's plenty of it, and it and it fits for this movie. Um, I particularly enjoyed when he had the entire guy in his mouth and was just, like, chomping on his middle. That was fun. Um, but some of the special effects were a little bit lacking. So where we have this amazing sewer scene, um, or sewer uh, 
whatever. What's the set? That's the word I'm looking for. Um, there are some things that just kind of took me out of the movie. Uh, when the alligator is emerging from underneath the sewer by breaking through this, the sidewalk, um, the Star Trek style shake the camera to simulate the ground shaking pulled me right out of the movie. I was like, what? It just see, it came off super goofy. Him actually coming out looked fine, but the like shaking the camera and having everybody like move with the shaking camera like they do on old Star Trek really <laughs> pulled me out of the movie. Uh, and then that. there were other times where the change between real alligator and dummy were just painfully obvious, and I was just, and it just those are what caused me to lower my score to a seven. Um, but not enough to make me go, I never want to watch that movie. That's fair. I, I think a lot of those, like, are kind of understandable for the age of the movie. Um, all right, we move on to Monster Slash Killer. I gave it a nine. The first introduction of where we, like, see the full-size alligator when David is in the sewer with the other cop, Kelly, and you can see the alligator behind them, uh, even for a brief moment, it's just masterful, and... I really like the alligator. I, I just really like the alligator in this movie. I could watch movie after movie after movie with this specific alligator. Unfortunately, uh, this specific alligator is not used in uh, the sequel, Alligator 2, The Mutation. In fact, that movie sucks, which is very sad. Uh, do not watch it. Do not waste your time. Uh, but, yeah, I give it a 9 because I could just watch this alligator all day. I, I like watching him stalk. I like watching him kill. Uh, maybe a little less tail whipping, but fuck it. I I'm down for you, Mr. Alligator Monster. You do what you gotta do and eat. Uh, Kenneth. Gave it a nine. Same reasons, pretty much. Um, I thought that everything was good. I liked, uh, I liked the idea behind it. Um, I think they did really well for using, you know, the animatronics of something this fucking big. Um, so I, I, I really enjoyed it. I thought the monster was really fucking cool. It had a good, uh, it gave good solid reasons for why it does what it, what it, what it fucking does. And, uh, yeah, go killer alligator. Woo. All right, Jay, what about you? Uh, I gave it an eight. Uh, I'm pretty much on board with you guys. I, um, just off by a point. It sounds like, um, but yeah, I really don't have anything to add to that, to that category. <laughs> All right, we move on to Hero then. Um, I gave Hero a 9. David is such a great character. He he has a tragic backstory, and he plays the cool detective really well. Um, he isn't overboard with it. He seems like a regular dude who's good at his job and is just dedicated to it. So I just really, really connect and like him as a character. Um, plus, he never stop. he never stops trying to beat the alligator, even when he could walk away. Um... Uh, Two different times he could have walked away, and he didn't. So, uh, Kenneth, what do you got for Hero? Same thing. I give it a nine. I love this dude. I thought of the uh, the acting was great. I thought the the backstory behind the guy was great. Um, I mean, everything. I, I, I just thought he was awesome. It was solid. You know, he, he was one of those guys that I was rooting for. Um, you know, I was happy when he got laid. Um, the whole nine. I mean, I like the dude. I gave him a nine. All right, Jay, what did you give him? Uh, so this one, uh, I definitely should have scored higher. Um, after hearing your character development speech, um, really, I, I should have scored this higher. I gave it a seven, kind of for the same reasons I gave character development a seven. Um, I do enjoy him. I think he's a fun character. Um, I just, I didn't quite realize some of the things that you guys brought up and so i ended up scoring him way lower than i should have he should have been right on par with the uh, the monster at an eight that's fair okay uh we move on to score slash soundtrack slash sound design um i gave this a five while i like the sound design of the movie the score sounds like it was made on a sega genesis and it is a really big problem it's just it's the soundtrack is is a little too cheesy for me. Um, it, it just and and I can't stop thinking of it sounding like fucking Vector Man on the Sega Genesis. It really fucked me up. I don't. It, it takes me out of the movie, and y'all know me. If it takes me out of the movie, that's where I really start hating on it. So, 
Unfortunately, I did give this one a five. Let's see if Kenneth's going to change my mind. Kenneth, score. I gave it a seven. A seven point five. I mean, it. There wasn't anything that was masterful about it, but at the same time, I didn't feel like. Uh, I didn't feel like like. It definitely was a product of his time. Let's put it that way. It, it's one of those that, you know, if I'm gonna watch a movie that came out in 1980, that's what I, That's kind of what I expect it to be like, you know. Unless it's like, you know, especially for the style of movie that it is. I mean, obviously, it's not like you know this 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 big budget fucking epic. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's a fucking B movie with a killer alligator, you know, so I'm not expecting it to be, you know, some some huge fucking grandiose thing. Um, so I think it did what it needed to do well. Um, the sound cues were good. Um, you know, it made me feel like I was watching a slasher movie with an alligator. Um, so I, I, I think it did what it needed to do very well. And, uh, you know, I gave it a 7.5. I thought it was pretty good. All right, Jay. Um, I gave it an eight. Uh, I like the Genesee C vector man style sound. Um, I've always kind of dug that, that sound. So it kind of stood out. And then earlier when I was talking about the no music cues for like the, the sneaky stuff, um, that I consider as part of the sound design. And so that kind of raised that score up a little bit higher for me. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a good point for sure. Um, all right, we move on to scare factor. Uh, I give this a 7. When I was a kid, the pool scene fucked me up. I was terrified that something was going to eat me in a pool. Um, And it's also one of my favorite scenes of all of horror. And it's always stuck with me. Basically, you have... um, You're at a kid's birthday party. The alligator has snuck into the pool to kind of sleep it off. And uh, they end up taking... Two other kids take this other kid... And they make, they're dressed up as pirates, and they make him walk the plank. And as he gets to the end of the diving board, he lifts up his thing as his mother calls for him and turns on the pool lights. And he sees the alligator raising up and opening its mouth. And the kids push him in as he starts screaming. And it then cuts to, to him in the water with the alligator mouth catching him. Uh, and then we see uh, the blood on the as we look down at the pool, you don't actually see the kid get eaten, but you see him in the mouth and you see the blood afterwards. You know what happened unless you watch the TV version. Cause the TV version doesn't have the blood in the pool. It shows the kid in the alligator's mouth, but doesn't show the blood. Um, and that scene stuck with me. It really fucked me up. And that's the reason I give this movie a seven because as an adult, it doesn't scare me, but as a kid that fucked me up and it, and it kept in me for a long time. So, uh, Kenneth, what do you got for scare factor? I gave it an eight. I mean, uh, I, again, with you, when I saw when I watched this movie when I was a kid, it fucking freaked me out. You know, I am one of the people that is on the bandwagon of watching Alligator at a very young age. Um, and so, it, again, I agree with you. The pool scene fucked me up. Other stuff fucked me up. And even now, I mean, it's just the, 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 there are instances where the movie's just fucking creepy. You know, the because like I said, I mean, it takes a lot from slasher cues. This movie does. I mean, you know, I've said it. I think I've said it before when we were talking about this. This, ba- this movie is basically a slasher movie with an alligator as the killer. And so I, I overall, I just think this movie has its moments of just being fucking creepy and and, and kind of, you know, uh, puts me off a little bit in certain spots and whatever else. So I gave the scare factor an eight. Yeah. I mean, there are definitely moments where I'm like, Ugh. there. There's a scene in the TV version that's not in the theatrical version, uh, where this woman is in her backyard hanging up uh, laundry, uh, holding her her daughter, who's I don't know, maybe around three or four, or something like that. Um, and she gets a phone call, so she puts the daughter in a playpen, and honestly, the playpen's too small. That that girl could literally get out with no problem. Um, and then we, she goes inside to answer her phone, and we see the girl in the playpen, and then we hear the sound of, like, a fence being crushed. And then we have the point of view of the alligator walking through the, the laundry lines of clothes. And then we have the mother coming from the phone, coming out there, seeing the pen knocked over, the playpen knocked over, and then looking and seeing that the Fence is fucking tore down, and some of the laundry's been ripped down, and the laundry basket's tipped over, 
and she's freaking out trying to find her daughter. Uh, luckily for her, she ends up finding her daughter hiding under the laundry basket. She uh, and her daughter safe and sound. But it, it was actually a pretty good scene that that could have uh, really got you if you, you were a parent of a like four year old girl when you're watching the movie. Right. I um, kind of wish I'd seen that. Uh, yeah, uh, I watched all the scenes that are in the TV version. Um, that's really the only one that actually matters. There is a cute scene where, uh, David calls, uh, Marissa's mom for the first time and he's trying to find out where she is before he goes and interrupts her in class. But the phone booth, someone has graffitied an alligator eating a woman on there and he shows the dog and he goes, look, if you see that dog, go south. Or if you see that alley, if you see that alligator, go south. And that was kind of cute. <laughs> Um, but Jay, Scare Factor, what do you got? Uh, I gave it a seven. Um, it's slightly creepier than Orca, um, mainly because I would be afraid of a mutant alligator being loose in my town. I'd probably get eaten. Um, but some of the, the, the cheesiness of it, which is, makes it, uh, charming as a movie, but makes it way less scary. So, seven. Yeah, I agree with you. All right, we move on to entertainment slash rewatchability. Uh, I gave this a 10. This is a flick that I can always fucking put on. It's quick and it's fun with great effects and great characters. I, I mean, uh, besides Jaws, this is probably my most watched creature feature. Um... I adore putting this movie on. I can put it on in the background. I can put it on to go to sleep. I can put it on just to watch. It is absolutely fantastic. And God damn it, can we please get a Blu-ray release of this that isn't some shitty Italian one that doesn't even look as good as the fucking out-of-print DVD. Yeah. You bastards. I uh, love this. Uh, Kenneth Entertainment slash Rewatchability. I gave it an 8. I mean, it was it was an eight's worth of entertainment, and I will probably end up watching this movie again in my life. So I kept it at an eight. All right, Jay. Uh, again, I'm in the middle of you guys. I gave it a nine. Uh, definitely more rewatchable than Orca because there's nothing sad about it except for the kid getting eaten in the pool. And I can't believe I forgot to mention that during Kills. Um, that kill was amazing and terrifying, by the way. Uh, I can't believe I forgot to talk about it. Uh, but yeah, super entertaining, super rewatchable. Uh, I think it would be a fun party flick. We were kind of talking about that when I was up in Atlanta movies. You can just kind of put on and, and look over at every once in a while where you're doing something else. Uh, but absolutely, definitely something I would own if there was a easily obtainable copy out there. Oh yeah. Great, great movie. Um, all right, we move on to pop culture. Um, I gave this a six. Unfortunately, this movie has been lost to time and eventually it just got completely overshadowed by Lake Placid as the best, um, alligator slash crocodile movie. Um, and now Lake Placid is going to be outshined by Crawl. So there's that. Um, but it is a movie that has been seen more than Orca. There are more people I find who have seen this movie than they've seen Orca, because it does follow the more basic outline of a creature feature. It's it's fun, it's entertaining, it just kind of goes on. So it has no pop culture as for mainstream, uh, but it does have pop culture in the horror genre and the subgenre of creature features. So I was able to give it a six, still not as known as it should be, but at least it has more notoriety than Orca. Kenneth? Um, I gave it a 4.5. I mean, it's it, it's one of those movies where, again, I kind of agree with you. It's not uh, wherein I've, I've seen more people that have seen it just like you. It's not one of those movies that's got a huge amount of, you know, status and notoriety and everything else like that. It's not. If it did, we would have a good Blu-ray release of it, which I wish we could get. But I even like I didn't I couldn't find my copy of it this morning you know, cause I've got a digital copy of it somewhere and I couldn't find it. And I tried to rent it and you can't even fucking rent it anywhere. Yeah, you can't. I don't know how many people have told me, Oh, I've never seen alligator cause I can't get a hold of it. And I'm like, here you go. Here's your digital copy. I'll give this movie away to everyone digitally because 
the only way to watch it is to get a VHS, which is very expensive, or a DVD, which is also very expensive. There is an Italian Blu-ray, but it's got really bad reviews. Um, so this is a movie that I bet you if Scream Factory put it out, uh, it would do great numbers. And you would have people coming out of the woodworks who are like, oh, I saw this as a kid. It's so fucking good. Yeah, so, I would definitely. I would if they put it out. I would definitely buy it because it's a it, again. It's one of those that I watched when I was a kid. You know, on on various you know runs to the video store, it was it was there, and you know it was one of those movies that wasn't riddled with a whole bunch of bullshit that my mom would let me watch when I was little. You know. Yeah. So, yeah. So you know, I mean, uh, I I. I this movie doesn't get the credit that it deserves. So, I mean, that's the reason why I had to keep my low pop culture score because it's just not really out there. Yeah. Uh, Jay, what did you give for a pop culture score? Uh, I'm right there with you at six. It's the same story as Orca. I had not heard of it or watched it until uh, you brought it up. And uh, I think your actual, the uh, forgotten moments in horror history or whatever you call that, that series of videos that you did like three of, um, was the first time I'd ever seen anything from it. So, yeah, that's uh, where did I'm at, right with you guys. Three, I did, I did, I did the pull scene. I did the screwdriver scene in Return of the Living Dead Two. I did the Spanish Dracula. I feel like I did a fourth one, but now I can't remember. Maybe it, but, I don't know. Uh, yeah, the pull scene from this movie is fucking legendary. Um, all right. We move on to our last category. That is right, folks. We are almost done here. Uh, thank you for hanging in. We got representation. And uh, once again, I've got this as a 10. When it comes to the eco-horror eco creature feature genre, this should be in everyone's top five. It's unfortunate how underseen and underappreciated it really is. Uh, in fact, if, if this movie had gotten steady releases... I think when Lake Placid would have came out, people would have been like, Lake Placid's good. Alligator's better. Um, so I, I I give it a 10. It's it's so strong for its subgenre. It is like in my my top five easy. Um and I absolutely fucking adore this film. It represents everything that I want in a a fun creature feature. So Kenneth. I gave it a nine. I thought it did a great job representing the the creature feature genre, um, the well, subgenre. I, I think it did. A, I think it did an amazing job. Um, it's definitely got all the things you need. It's got the creepiness in it. It doesn't. It takes itself seriously. It doesn't fucking goddamn try to throw a bunch of fucking bullshit slapstick humor in there. I mean, it's just it's it's an all around solid fucking movie, and it does a good job at uh, at doing what it's supposed to do. So I gave it a nine. All right, Jay, what do you got? Uh, eight. I'm, I mean, I'm on board with everything you guys said. Um, but again, this is a genre that I have a small amount of uh, knowledge about, so that kind of probably skewed my score. Um, but yeah, it's definitely a solid creature feature and definitely one I'm going to be recommending in the future when people are like, I want a creature feature. Very nice. All right, that means we come down to the scores uh, I gave Alligator 122 points, um, which was the highest. Jay came in at the lowest with 116 points. And uh, Kenneth gave it 120 points. He's right in the middle, two points lower than me. Um, I was the highest on both films. And uh, e easily Alligator uh, wins this since its highest score uh, is 122 and then 120 and 116. As to where Orca, its highest score is, is only two points above Alligator's lowest score. So while I think Allig Alligator is definitely the funner movie, Orca is the more serious film. But depending on what you want in your creature feature, uh, this is perfect for both moods of creature feature. Serious and... Uh, Serious filmmaking versus popcorn filmmaking. So, man, what a fucking good time tonight, guys. Uh, I hope everyone enjoyed us going through this. This has got to be at least a fucking two and a half hour long show at this point. Um, so, woohoo. 
Thank you for joining us, everyone. I know it's been so long since we've done Horror Coliseum. We will definitely be get, getting back to trying to get those out uh, at least once every other month, uh, maybe more. Uh, maybe we'll do more polls so y'all can pick uh, what we do. And th- th- that's it. Does anyone have anything else they want to say on Alligator or Orca? Jay? Uh, I, I'm i glad that we watched these movies. I Like I said, I probably wouldn't have. If it wasn't for this podcast, uh, I can actually say that about a lot of movies over the last four years. Um, But they were fun. Uh, Orca was a nice, serious take on the genre with a very unique story. And Alligator was a very fun, entertaining, classic, uh, mutated mutated, uh, animal movie. Both very solid flicks. Um, And anybody who's listening who hasn't seen them like me, I definitely recommend uh, checking them out. You can rent Orca on uh, Amazon. For uh, three bucks, I think I paid for it. Um, and if you mention us in the group, we'll hook you up with a digital copy of Alligator. Yep. Also, uh, you can get a Blu-ray of Orca. It has a uh, region-free umbrella release. And I also isn't Scream Factory putting it out now? I have no idea, but they need to get on that Alligator kick. Every yeah, I don't know what the fuck. Lionsgate's the last person I knew who owned, that yeah, I was had say, who owns the rights. Lionsgate had it last. They put out the DVD, but I, I don't know uh, who has it currently. Um, Kenneth, do you have anything you want to say to the people about Alligator or Orca? Everything else, said. That is a good way to go. All right, then. Um, I guess we are going to get the hell out of here. We had a blast, but it is late, and um, we got things to do, mostly sleep or eat or something like that. I'm Thank you all for joining us. Stand. <laughs> uh jay's gonna play more blood stain kenneth is probably gonna go sleep i'm going to eat because it's 11 10 p.m at night and i have not eaten today yes please so, thank you i'm gonna go eat um but that's it thank you everyone for joining us check us out in the facebook group we've been having some fun in there and we love you make sure you don't accidentally kill a whale and watch out for the sewers And if you join our upcoming Patreon, we are going to uh, let you watch us wiggle. We'll make you giggle. (laughs) I can do the truffle shuffle from Goonies. I'm just saying. I'm going to get the alligator board of the the fucking dude selling the little jiggly alligators. (laughs) Watch them wiggle, make you giggle. All right. We are out of here, everyone. Good night. If you enjoyed this show, then make sure you check out the other great shows on the Legion Podcast Network, like Cinema PsyOps, Cinema Beef, Devour the Podcast, Duncan and Bo Come Correct, Exploding Heads Horror Movie Podcast, Friday the 13th, Get Slayed, The Hell Ming Power Hour, Hello, This is the Doom Show, Hero Hero Ghost Show, Kill the Cast, Underwater Kaiju from Outer Space, Jerry Hates Action, Legion After Dark, Mental Health, Obsessive Cinema, Discourse, Pick Six Movies, The Podcast by the Cemetery, The Podcast on Haunted Hill, The Psycho Semantic Podcast, Rick Radio, House of Wax, Dude Looks Like the 80s, Rabbit and Red Radio, The Shade Cast, Short Bus Cinema, Two Drink Minimum Commentaries, The VD Clinic, Who Will Survive Horror Podcast, and Which vs. the Doomsday Clock. With such a widespread of shows, there is guaranteed to be a niche for you to fall in love with. Horror, politics, movies, books, sex, music, commentaries, health, video games, kaiju, action, news, comedy, and opinions that would most likely get you killed in some parts of the world. We are proud to bring you some of the best podcasting in the world. Check us out at www.legionpodcast.com, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, and any other dark corner of the internet where podcasts can be found.